kind of five big things we're hearing. Kind of the first one is that productivity and performance are at odds with continued employee burnout. The World Health Organization defines burnout as feelings of energy depletion, negativism, distance from one's job, or even just a dip in productivity or efficacy at work. There's some really interesting research that just came out of Gallup that the traditional levers that we pull around, you know, taking vacations, more PTO, or potentially, you know, a mental health day, that working less isn't actually enough to reduce that stress, improve well-being, or prevent burnout. It is part of the story, but it's not the whole story. Gallup's analysis about employee burnout found that the missing piece is actually how experience, uh, how employees experience their workload. There's some interesting research that Gartner put out very recently around, related to all what we just been talking about here, the skill gap crisis. And leaders like yourselves are well aware of this. This isn't new, but I do think the environment over the past couple of years has absolutely exacerbated this feeling. And the research came out in 2020 that managers and employees are feeling this tension of, I don't have what I need for down the road, but I don't even have what I need for today. So that leaves leaders like you with this question of like, okay, do we figure out how to put our time, energy, and resources into upskilling and reskilling, or we go higher? But what we're seeing is that the external talent pools don't have these skills either. And as I'm sure you all are well aware, there's a lot of motivation. You keep disruption minimized. There's a lot of motivational research around career pathing. So if we can build this internally, that really is to many organizations' advantage. I was just saying, I posted a channel as well, similar to situational leadership. And I think so many managers, you guys were talking about earlier, haven't gotten the manager development they needed. And so they're not recognizing the situation they're in. So they're either telling, instructing when they should be coaching, or they've missed the training um, just with all the transition people coming and going. So it, it, they're very collaborative models, I guess. What I see leaders thinking through as we share some of this information is like, well, what about the people who really need coaching and how will they use it to do the things we want them to do, as opposed to just having a coach working on the things you want? And how do we know it's actually working? Well, this is where our research can highlight that we actually have data to suggest that these things are addressable problems. And so in terms of who really needs it, we've built out what we call our, our identify AI model. And that can be a bit of a black box, but at the end of the day, first and foremost predictor of who's going to use coaching is back to that idea of who wants it, who's ready for it, and who is really excited to be invested in. So here's a little field guide to getting started. So still see identify being one of those, right? Like, especially in where resources are tight and teams are tight, like being able to identify all these different populations when you're thinking about scale can be difficult. And now I'm seeing energy really moving to measure. And this is something we hear in the majority of our conversations that like, we're able to get a pulse check on whether people love interventions and are taking things with what, how are they engaged? Maybe some like mindset shift data, but our ability to measure things and business value to prove just how valuable this is to the organization has been limited. And there's a big ask here for like, how can we move the field forward? It's these three, oops, sorry, these three areas. First, identifying your critical populations that need the most support, given what kind of what's going on in your world. Second, what are these critical skills or things needed? Is it something like Priya shared with Prism? Is it something different? Is it technical in nature? And what do you need to measure? What would great look like? And start with designing with the end in mind. If you have those three things, you're certainly well on your way. We're actually going to share a more detailed worksheet as you think these things through and kind of put pen to paper on a simple visual. Thanks, Kyle. It, it did answer my question. I will tell you, we invest a lot, organizations invest a lot in trying to build manager skills as coaches. And I think a lot of that investment is not paying off because there's so many counter factors that are going to influence what they do day to day. 